What's up, everybody? Welcome to week three of my Overwatch League key matches. There aren't as many interesting matches as last week, if you ask me. There's still some good games that you don't want to miss out on, but some of these days feel a little bit lackluster. As usual, we'll be starting off with Thursday's games, but before I jump into it, I just wanted to make it clear that all times you see on the screen are in Eastern Standard Time. Make sure to figure out what time the games start for you if you live in a different time zone. And with that out of the way, let's look at our first day of games. So Thursday has some pretty weak looking games, I'll be honest. The one game that catches my eye on this day is the San Francisco Shock versus the Hongju Spark. Both teams failed to win a match last week and are each currently on a two game losing streak. So needless to say, this is looking like a crucial bounce back game for both sides. Each team needs this win to help increase their odds of making the stage one playoffs. Expect the Spark to come out swinging in this one. I think they need this win more than the Shock do since they're a new team that could have a difficult time coming back from adversity and the Shock on the other hand have that experience and knowledge already so losing another game wouldn't hurt their confidence as much. This has the potential to be the game of the week if both teams play as well as I expect them to. Friday's games look a bit more exciting and I consider them all to be key matchups. Matchup number one is the LA Gladiators and London Spitfire. This game has the potential to be very close. I'm sure the Gladiators want revenge after what the Spitfire did to them in the playoffs last year, so I think they're really going to be stepping up their game for this one. Another reason to watch this from the Gladiator side of things is because it'll be the first game that their new DPS player Decay will be eligible to play in. He's one of the most hyped up rookies coming into this year, and I'm sure his debut will be really exciting. Paying attention to London during this match is also very important. The team looked totally different in week two. They actually looked like they knew how to play GOATs, and I'm curious to see whether or not they can keep this up. The outcome of this match will help decide if Guard is London's answer to fixing their GOATs problems. Game number two has also gotten my attention. The Toronto Defiant have looked pretty solid through their first three games, and now we get to see how much of a difference maker Neko will be at the flex support position since his three game suspension is now up. He was a pretty good Zenyatta player for the Boston Uprising last year, and now we finally get to see what he brings to the table on his new team. The NYXL on the other hand, have also looked like a really good team, and it's always fun to watch these guys play since there are just so many star players who can pop off at any given moment. The tank battle, as well as the matchup between Neko and Jonek should be paid close attention to. The third game of Friday night will be between the Vancouver Titans and the LA Valiant. The Titans are looking like one of the top teams in the league right now, and winning this game would most likely secure a stage one playoff appearance for them. This Vancouver team is super entertaining to watch. Their tanks have been playing out of their minds, and I don't see a reason why they wouldn't be able to continue that on Friday. And this is also a must-win game for the Valiant. An 0-4 start would basically ruin any chances of them making the stage one playoffs. If they want to turn this thing around, then they'll need to go on a big win streak, which is going to have to start by beating the Titans. A win for the Valiant here would be monumental. Not only would their playoff hope still be alive, but beating a team of this caliber would surely give them a massive confidence boost. The final matchup of the night is the Dragons and the Hunters. The Chengdu Hunters haven't looked that bad so far. They've actually played better than I expected them to, and a 3-1 start could really help them make a push for the Stage 1 playoffs. The Shanghai Dragons, on the other hand, have an opportunity to create even more history with a win in this match. It would be the first time in their team's history where they go on a win streak. Saturday has two games that are worth paying attention to. The first is the Paris Eternal and Atlanta Rain match. Both teams have looked pretty strong in this meta, so it's likely that this game will be somewhat close. It's also going to be fun watching Soon and Defran go at it as well, because the two of them have some history that reaches back to the days when Soon played for Rogue and Defran played for Selfless. They both play Zarya for their teams as well, so make sure to pay extra attention to who plays better. The player who has a better day could help dictate which team ends up winning. The other Saturday game to watch out for is the Dallas Fuel and Shanghai Dragons matchup. If the Dragons win both of their games this week, then they'll have a positive record for the first time in franchise history. This is also an important game for Dallas though. The Fuel have looked great in two of their games, but horrible in the other two. They've arguably been the most inconsistent team in the league, and going on a winning streak could help establish some needed consistency and confidence going into week four. And finally, when taking a look at Sunday's games, there are two in particular that I recommend watching. The first is the Hongju Spark and the LA Gladiators. These are two potential Pacific Division juggernauts, and a hotly contested game could potentially set up a rivalry between them for many stages to come. The tank battle between Nosemite and Roar, as well as Gooshway and Roar, should be fun to watch in this matchup. The last matchup of Week 3 is the Seoul Dynasty and NYXL game. This is a rivalry matchup that I highly recommend tuning in for. The Dynasty have never beaten the NYXL before, and you have to think their chances of finally taking them down will go up with the addition of Fissure. 
These two teams played a few really amazing games last year, and hopefully we get to see more of that this Sunday. A win for the NYXL here could put them in a really good spot to get the number one seed in the Stage 1 playoffs. Seoul would be in a great spot to make the playoffs as well if they end up winning both of their games this week, and that would help them achieve more history since they've never been to any kind of playoff game in the Overwatch League. And with that being said, those are all my key matchups for Week 3. We could potentially see some more really sick games this week, and I'm super excited. Make sure to let me know what games you're looking forward to down in the comments section, and feel free to let me know if you think I missed any important games too. Thank you all for watching today's video. I really do appreciate it as always. Be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed it and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new so you don't miss out on any of my future uploads. And until next time, this is ATP signing out. Peace.